Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Chuck Holsinger, and I am here with the uh, Wings of Healing podcast, where we are walking by faith. It, it's not uh, extremely uncustomary uh, in most of in most of our churches um, to greet one another with a handshake or a high five or a fist bump or uh, something like that. And uh, a lot of times we use terms such as praise the Lord, hello, um, how are you doing, things of that nature. But the early church uh, would have done things a little bit differently. And I I want to uh, look at it in today's podcast. I want to greet you with a term that the early church would have greeted one another with and would have used to... um, in, in just in an everyday conversation with one another, and that is Maranatha, Maranatha. So let's get into it here today. Grab your Bibles and let's talk about a Maranatha mindset. Here we go. So what is a Maranatha mindset, or for that matter, Uh, What does Maranatha mean, you might be asking. So I want to uh, look at this term. It's actually only mentioned one time uh, in Scripture. Uh, But uh, in in essence, it's mentioned many, many times. And we're going to see it uh, throughout the Word of the Lord and also uh, throughout history. But Maranatha is a term that believers in the New Testament would have used uh, sort of as a greeting uh, to one another, uh, Maranatha, uh, rather than just shaking hands or fist bumps or um, uh, high fives. Believers in the early church would greet one another using the term Maranatha. Just what does Maranatha mean? It simply means uh, the Lord cometh, the Lord cometh cometh. So I want to talk a little bit about a Maranatha mindset. As we begin to think about um, in, in, in our day and in comparison to the early church, uh, what was the mindset that they had and why was this so important to their faith and why was it so important uh, to their walk with God? Why was this a constant reminder uh, that they would use uh, to greet you know, one another um, and, and as a reminder that the Lord comes? I, I find it somewhat uh, interesting. Uh, it, it's captivating to me that uh, even such an early time after Christ had had been resurrected and Christ had ascended, uh, that even at such an early time, close to that time, that they were so engulfed in this, uh, in the Lord coming back. And, and I think that we have to really understand uh, the time frame, uh, the the what was happening to the early church in that time, and also to get an understanding of why we should be, you know, maybe adapting to uh, a Maranatha mindset. You see, it was their hope during great persecution. It was their joy during times of sorrow and trouble. We see clearly through Scripture that the early church eagerly anticipated the second coming of Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22, I want to give you where the word Maranatha is mentioned. And it's really just kind of faintly mentioned. It's just kind of seasoned in there. And and the scriptures just kind of go on. Uh, And and if you're not careful, you'll just miss it. But 1 Corinthians 16, 22 says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema or accursed Maranatha. And this is the Apostle Paul speaking to, to believers who who apparently had to make some decisions you know we uh he said if any man love not the lord jesus christ first of all let him be accursed then he said maranatha the lord cometh 
It was their hope during great persecution. It was their joy during times of sorrow, struggle, and distress. The early church suffered greatly for the cause of Christ, and it was this uh, mindset that allowed them to do so with such faith and such integrity and uh, realizing that they have a hope uh, that is beyond the persecution, the struggles, and the stresses of life. Hebrews 9.28 reminds us uh, in in the word of the Lord, Hebrews 9.28, one translation says, but when we die, we will be face to face with Christ, the one who experienced death once and for all to bear the sins of many. And I love this part right here. And now to those who eagerly await him, he will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to bring us the fullness of salvation. Scriptures such as Hebrews 9, 28 describes early believers as eagerly awaiting the the return of Christ. Christ's return uh, will be welcomed by those who are eagerly awaiting for his return. If they anticipated his coming then that much, how much more should we be anticipating the coming of the Lord now in our day? Paul instructs Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 and 8. He says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Paul writes to those who love his appearing. It was through their trials. It was through their turmoil and and great persecution that the early church believers and many of the apostles and the disciples experienced in those days. But it was during this time that they remained focused and, and, and had this Maranatha mindset. They remained focused by reminding themselves and each other that the Lord cometh, Maranatha, the Lord cometh. We may be facing struggles today. You may be facing hard times. You may be facing issues in your life. And and I want to encourage you today to hang in there. The Lord cometh. You see, the return of Christ is imminent. It's not a question of whether or not he will return, but he, in fact, will return. The facts are within the pages of the word of God. I I find it somewhat kind of even overwhelming that uh, for every one prophecy in the Old Testament that foretold of Jesus' first coming, We have eight in the New Testament that foretells of his second return. The first coming was for everyone. Whosoever will, let him come. The second coming will be for those who are looking, waiting, and expecting his return with a Maranatha mindset. Those that through salvation have made their calling and their election sure. A couple of things to understand about the coming of the Lord, that there's going to be two components to his coming. There will be the rapture of the church or the catching of, of away of the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 52, uh, it describes this catching away uh, happening in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The second component to the Lord's coming will be the revelation or the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. While the church is being raptured, we are going to meet the Lord in the air. What an awesome thing to even think about. 
I, I want you to know today that his first coming happened in the quiet stillness of the night. There was only a few shepherds. There were only a few people that witnessed the first coming of Jesus Christ when he was born in that still night in Bethlehem. But his second coming will be a global event for all the world to see. All eyes shall behold him. Revelation 19 and 11 says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make more, make war. We must understand that when he came the first time, he was always planning to come back again. That's the reason why that this Maranatha mindset was so embedded in the in the uh, in the culture of the early church. If you look at it historically, um, <clears throat> this this mindset was there, and even in John chapter fourteen, Jesus was talking to the to the disciples, to the people of God. And he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. You see, he was always planning to come back again. First, uh, Thessalonians chapter number four and verses 13 through 15 says, but I would not have you it to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, verse 16, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And Paul said, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. He was always planning to come back again. One in every 25 verses in the New Testament deal with some aspect of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Wow. Maranatha. The Lord cometh. We are called to be the bride of Christ in the New Testament. A bride anticipates her wedding day, and we too should anticipate the return and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what the Maranatha mindset is. It, it, it's, an, it's an approach to understanding that no matter what we go through, it's going to be okay. No matter what we may be dealing with right now, it, it pales in comparison to, the, to eternity that we're all going to be a part of. Some may fault this type of approach, but I, I want to ask you today, why shouldn't we anticipate the second coming of Jesus Christ? Why shouldn't we prepare ourselves for his coming? Why shouldn't we encourage others to make their calling and their election sure? We, you see, we will see the place that he has prepared for us. We will see loved ones that has gone on before us. Mar uh, Maranatha, the Lord cometh. Reading the accounts of the early church makes makes me understand the eternal mindset that they were able to obtain due to the anticipation of the coming of the Lord. You see, we ask ourselves a lot of questions. We dwell on a lot of things in our life. And, and I'll be honest, some may disagree with what I'm about to say. But the right question isn't, what career should I pursue? It's really not what school should I go to. It's not how much money should I save or should I aspire to make. It's not even what should I do with my life. 
But the most important question that you'll ever ask yourself, you'll ever ponder upon, is the question of, are you ready? It is the only question in your life that will have eternal repercussions. Revelation 19 and 7 says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage supper of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. You know who, who his wife is? The church of the living God. And we need to be making preparations, anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to have a Maranatha mindset like never before. We need to have a Maranatha mindset when you go through troubles and turmoils and struggles in your life. Maybe you've got things happening in your home, in your family. I want to encourage you today to put all those things in perspective to eternity and understand that Jesus Christ is coming back and his coming is nigh upon us. So today, I want to leave you with this. Maranatha, the Lord cometh. Anticipate the coming of the Lord. When you do, these things that seem to be so overwhelming in this life will really lose their splendor to us. So they'll lose their grip on us. When we really begin to look in, in comparison to eternity, the things that overwhelm us, the things that bother us, the things that seem to take so much of our time, effort, and our, 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 um, just our, our mindset will begin to uh, pale in comparison to eternity. Maranatha. It was C.H. Spurgeon that wrote this concerning a Maranatha mindset, declaring, Oh, that the Lord would come. He is coming. He is on the road and traveling quickly. The sound of his approach should be as music to our hearts. May the cry of our hearts continually be, Hallelujah, Hosanna to God in the highest. Maranatha, our Lord cometh. Amen. John Piper wrote to this, or asked the question, does your mind return frequently to the truth of Christ's appearing? When your mind turns to the truth of his appearing, does your heart want it? Is there an eagerness to see him? Do you pray for his coming? Maranatha prayed the early church, come Lord Jesus. So Maranatha, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, Maranatha, believers in Christ Jesus, the Lord cometh. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Wings of Healing podcast where we're walking by faith. Take a little time, share this with somebody, uh, invite someone else to join along with us on our journey as we are walking by faith. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.